When I was little, my father was famous. He was the greatest samurai in the empire. He cut off the heads of 131 lords. Hey everybody, Jerry Williams, aka Greater Sapien here. Thanks for stopping by. Today we're diving into number 98 of Eric Dubay's 200 Proofs Earth is Not a Spinning Ball. Dubay claims, NASA and modern astronomy say Polaris, the North Pole star, is somewhere between 323 and 434 light years away from us. Firstly, note that is between 1.938 and 2.604 quadrillion miles, making a difference of 666 trillion over 600 trillion miles. If modern astronomy cannot even agree on the distance to stars within hundreds of trillions of miles, perhaps their science is flawed and their theory needs re-examining. However, even granting them their obscurely distant stars, it is impossible for heliocentrists to explain how Polaris manages to always remain perfectly aligned straight above the North Pole throughout Earth's various alleged tilting, wobbling, rotating, and revolving motions. Okay, this is a perfect example of why I brand so many Flat Earth proponents as science deniers. The range of distance estimates for Polaris reflects the development of astronomical measurement techniques over time. Initially, measurements like those from the Hipparchos satellite, which operated from 89 to 93, gave us a certain range dog. But as technology and methods have improved, so has the accuracy. The most recent data from the Gaia mission, that's your European Space Agency, not NASA, has significantly narrowed down this range, bringing its distance to 447 uh, light years plus or minus 1.6 light years. This isn't a flaw in science. It's an example of science doing exactly what it's supposed to do get more precise as it advances. Science deniers seek to label this fundamental aspect of science as a flaw. To claim science should not have any uncertainty or be willing to update information as more comes to light is to deny the very core of what science is. Now, about Polaris being perfectly aligned above the North Pole, Dubay's statement shows a fundamental misunderstanding or purposeful misrepresentation of how Earth's axis and Polaris interact. The Earth's axis points almost directly at Polaris. However, it is not perfect, and it does wobble over thousands of years. That's called precession. This wobble changes the celestial pole's alignment with the stars. Polaris hasn't always been the North Star and won't be forever. Historical records show that other stars have held the mantle of the North Star. Around 3000 BCE, Thuban in the constellation Draco was the North Star for the Egyptians, building the pyramids. Then it was Kochab in the constellation of Ursa Minor around 1500 BCE. Polaris then became the pole star around the 4th century CE and it is about 0.66 degrees away from the pole and is slowly moving closer. It's expected to come closest in about 75 years and be about 0.4525 degrees from the pole before gradually moving away again. But it will remain the closest star to the celestial north pole until around the year 3000 when Gamma Cephei will then be the closest. Dubay's argument hinges on a perceived inconsistency that isn't inconsistent at all when you understand the basics of astronomy. His mention of a difference of 666 trillion miles as some sort of gotcha is irrelevant and meaningless outside of trying to invoke numerology like that has meaning. He had to use rounded values to get that number anyway. People. Questioning and re-examining are a part of the scientific method, but dismissing entire bodies of work without robust empirical evidence or a coherent testable theory is not. It's denialism. And in this case, 
it's clear that the argument against the distance to Polaris and its role as a North Star isn't about seeking truth. It's about ignoring it. No one on this planet to even challenge me. Maybe you came by to congratulate me on last night's victory. 